Good morning and welcome especially to those who are visiting for the first time to our Sunday Mass here at St Charles Borromeo Church. This week Christ the King invites to take for our heritage the kingdom prepared for us since the foundation of the world. He reminds us that our judgment before God will not merely be based on how we have used our God-given talents, but also on how we have extended ourselves in charity to serve the least of those among us. Our celebrant this morning is Father Greg. Please stand as we begin with our opening hymn. Sing to the Lord with shouts of joy, let all creation rejoice. Come join the song of praise to our God, He is the Lord, He is the Lord. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all you nations. Sing to the Lord with shouts of joy, let all creation rejoice. Come to the song of praise to our God, He is the Lord, He is the Lord. Great is the King of creation, He is faithful. Salvation. Sing to the Lord with shouts of joy, let all creation rejoice. Come join the song of praise to our God, He is the Lord, He is the Lord. Thank you, choir of one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hey, welcome today. It's the last Sunday before we begin Advent. So I've got my shimmy shimmies on, okay? It's a nice, bright, shiny one. It's because today is the feast day of Christ the King. A little bit more about that in the homily. But basically, we recognize him as our leader, and he's such a good leader. He loves us. He's like a shepherd who cares for his sheep. The readings will be about that. And later on, we'll also hear uh, John Lumley speaking to us a bit about the Christmas appeal for, for St. Vincent de Paul. That'll come after the homily. In any case, let's open up our hearts now to the Lord's love and his goodness, because he has such beautiful things in store for us. But beforehand, we are going to have our kids, everybody underneath that height, basically, okay, Come on down for the kids' liturgy. Out, out they come running, I tell you. They're all spread around the church. Yeah? Anybody upstairs? No, you look like you're a little bit higher than that, okay? Fantastic. I always love kids' liturgy. They come racing down, okay? And we've got our team. They're already there. So hold on a second. No, I've got to give you the big one. Do we have? It's already over there, okay? So we don't have any crosses and things. to care. No cross either? What about the one we're carrying on our shoulders? Is that... Okay, so we're all going to carry over the, the, the cross that we have on our shoulders. In any case, I'm going to give you a little blessing, and you have a little bit more time today as well, which is beautiful, so I'm going to give you a little blessing. May the Lord bless you in this time of kids' liturgy. Kids' liturgy rocks. And it's so beautiful, Jesus, how much you love us, and you shepherd us, and you look after us just like a shepherd would his sheep. May our kids experience your love this morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, exit. Al altar left. Here we are. Fantastic. Sorry, again, no cross to take over this time. Yeah. When we have, have kids' liturgy at 10 o'clock and they go over, we lose about half the church. <laughs> anyway, that's all right. Not a problem. Yeah. The average age also ups by about 50 when we do so. <laughs> Not a problem in any case. Let's continue on with this beautiful Mass. I'm so glad you're here this morning. I'm so glad that you can experience in this hour the presence of Jesus among us in the least of our brethren and he's beckoning us to greater and greater things through his love. Let's ask forgiveness for our lack of love and generosity and kindness and all the rest this week with these words. 
I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have, have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in, my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, and may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we, bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son, Jesus himself, may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We also welcome this morning all those who are following via our live streaming, especially from overseas. You're very, very welcome here this morning. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one bring back the stray, bandage the wounded, and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, the Lord says this, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd there, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd, there, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord, the Lord is, is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all, of all them in their proper order, 
Christ as the first fruits, and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that, I will come to the end, when he hands over the kingdom to the God, the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subject all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Praise. Please stand. Hallelujah. Blessings on him him who who comes comes in the name name of the Lord. Blessings Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Alleluia, alleluia. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint matthew glory to you O lord jesus said to his disciples when the son of man comes in his glory escorted by all the angels then he will take his seat on his throne of glory all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome, naked, and you clothed me, sick, and you visited me, in prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothed you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer. I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, go, uh, go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger And you never made me welcome, naked, and you never clothed me, sick and in prison, and you never visited me. And then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? And then you'll answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, I guess that for most of us, Hearing that today the church celebrates the Feast of Christ the King, it probably wouldn't exactly increase your heartbeat noticeably. (laughs) Probably wouldn't excite you that much. And I can understand that. For royalty are normally pretty distant figures to most of us, even in the best of cases. And your chances of personally meeting them or getting help from them or having a cup of coffee with them are probably Buckley's or none next to nothing. But not so with Jesus, our Lord and King. He is of a very different type to other kings and princes and the like. You see, for the people of Israel, 
Their image of the ideal leader wasn't a warrior or a son of the gods like in the neighboring places around them. And they copied a lot of customs, but they did not copy that one. He didn't need flashy chariots or live in sumptuous palaces. Their favorite image of God is like in the first reading of the shepherd who was out and about with the sheep wherever they went, tending to them. He walks with them. He's attentive to their needs. And over and over, looks for their benefit rather to his own safety, his or her own safety. And so what it says to us is that our Lord and King Jesus will always be walking with us and he'll intervene whenever the wolf comes. The Lord says, this is what it said in the first reading, I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and the darkness. As a missionary overseas, I've often found myself in many situations in which I felt scattered or confounded. So too even back home in Australia. You know, there are lots of mists and darkness in life to threaten our faith in Jesus. Mists take the form of uncertainties of how to proceed with no clear way ahead. Growing families can do that to parents. The needs constantly change and the demands on them as well do. The darkness, on the other hand, is all around us. Evil definitely exists in our world. We see it on the news every day, day in, day out. And Jesus tells us that the devil is real. We heard that in the gospel today. But we are not alone. We have him to help us. However, alone, we will be no match for his capabilities. Know, however, that the Lord Jesus has got you covered. The servant king is here for us. This gentle royalty calls himself your shepherd and your friend, and you will never be lost. No one can ever pull you from his hands, is what he tells us in the Gospel of St. John. And nor will you be wanting for joy or meaning or happiness in your life. Guaranteed. The Lord is my shepherd is what we have in that psalm. There is nothing I shall want. And though I walk through the valley of darkness, no evil will I fear. So even if right now, or even at home or overseas, I know the coronavirus overseas has been so tragic for a lot of our families, even if you're feeling a little bit hard done by, or disillusioned with people, or relationships and things, Jesus still stands his ground for you. No doubt about it. He has his arms around us, and I say that often. Nothing can happen to us outside of his loving plan. But still, in that first reading, the prophet Ezekiel expresses God's frustration and his dismay at his negligent shepherds, who should be putting the needs of the sheep first instead of looking after their own, and they won't. And that's why he decided to take over the reins and guide the flock himself. The Lord says, this is that reading, I myself am going to look after my flock and keep all of them in view. Hmm? I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded, strengthen the weak. I shall be a true shepherd to them. Beautiful words, you know, take those readings home with you. Put them up on your fridge and have a read through them during the week over a cup of coffee. And as I keep saying to those making their first Holy Communion, today I have the last two sets of Holy Communions, the beauty of Jesus' real presence within us that we take home with us in the Eucharist is that you can take this shepherd home with you, within you, wherever you go. He's guaranteed to be with you. So listen then to his voice inside you in our conscience, telling us what is right and what is wrong. Listen to his instructions in the gospel, in the Bible, in the church teachings. Follow that voice and you won't get lost and peace will return to your heart. Jesus literally reveals himself to us in others, even though we may not be aware of it. Like in today's gospel. He said, come you whom my father has blessed. 
Take for your heritage the kingdom that has been prepared for you since before the beginning of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Stranger, you made me welcome. I love these words. Naked and you clothed me. Sick and you visited me. In prison and you came to see me. Mother Teresa repeated these words ad infinitum and almost ad nauseum, okay? <laughs> but they were her mainstay as she worked through the slums of Calcutta and we admire her for what she did. But better than admiration is actually to do something about it. We are told that on that last day, the Lord Jesus will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from goats. And I've seen that happen on farms. The sheep and the goats represent, on the one hand, the compassionate people, and on the other hand, the indifferent ones. So I guess we've got to ask ourselves the question, which side of the divide do we believe we're on? The surprising thing in that gospel is that none of them realized that Jesus was there in those little ones. None of them. Not, neither the virtuous nor the others. Like the bridesmaids in the parable that we had last week, who all fell asleep, the wise no less than the foolish, good and bad alike, they were all taken by surprise when Jesus revealed himself to them. I was there in the homeless that you saw in the streets and in the needy, in the unpopular, the chronically ill, in the unwanted and in the forgotten. That is me. But since the virtuous ones in the gospel serve them anyway, even without seeing Jesus in them, they didn't realize it until he showed it to them, they are the ones that Jesus will reward handsomely because they believe God's words are true. Like Jesus told St. Thomas at the end of the Gospel of John, blessed are those who have not seen me and yet still believe. They still believe that they're there in those people even if they don't see Jesus in them. So the Gospel of today is a healthy reminder that we are all responsible for the most insignificant of our brothers and sisters. For Jesus has identified himself permanently with them. And we as his church, we have an even greater responsibility to look out for the marginalized and protect the weak. We do that through our charitable works, like with our own St. Vincent de Paul and Catholic care. More about that later. But who then are the lonely and the needy and the miserable, the wounded and the weak, the stray in your own little world? Who are the least of your brethren? They're all around us. Ah, but I haven't seen any, Father Greg. Well, of course you wouldn't. We've got to have the eyes of faith to do so. There's a classic line out of one of Avril Lavigne's songs. I mean, you guys are probably not much into Avril Lavigne. It's found 2002, but I love this song, okay? It was a teeny bopper sort of a song. But it's in the song, Too Much to Ask. And she says, um, um, can't you see that you lie to yourself? You can't see the world through a mirror. Hey, those are prophetic words, huh? You can't see yourself through a mirror. You've got to look outwards. We can't just be concentrating on our own belly buttons. Look outside of yourself, around you in your little world, and you will spot the lonely and the unwanted, the people with problems, mental health issues, low self-esteem. Take them on your shoulders, for them and for Jesus and for yourself. So friends, we must never forget that Jesus' message in the gospel of today is actually for everyone, not just for us Christians. There were no religious overtones in that message. He promises all the nations, that includes what would be called the pagans, the religious and the godless, that they will be assembled before the Lord on that last day and he will judge us by what we've done or not done for the least of our brothers and sisters. But the message is particularly relevant for us as believers who have been called and given the grace to respond. Let's respond without waiting for Jesus to receive, re reveal himself to us. Let's believe, blessed are they who have not seen me but still believe. In this weekend's messages, messages, <laughs> sorry, masses, huh? we are promoting the St. Vincent de Paul Christmas Appeal and John Lumley, who's the current president of the ride, St. Vinnie's, 
uh, which is part of our parish's pastoral outreach to the poor and the needy and forgotten. John's going to speak to us about his work and the Vinnie's Christmas appeal this year. So take it away, John. Thanks. Thank you, Father Greg. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as you can imagine, it's our Christmas appeal, it's 2020. And uh, it's been an incredibly different time. I've never seen a pandemic it's changed every single thing we ever do and will do until it's over. So all our processes about visitation, telephone calls, everything has changed. But rather than go into that, the big impact, of course, is on the people we help. You know that a lot of people lost their job, simple as that. Work stopped and they were put off. And they were given a payment called Job Seeker, which was the old new start plus a supplement for Corona. And it sounds a lot of money with a bonus supplement of $550, but it's, it's not. I'm not knocking the government, they did a lot of work to try hard. But that 550 is already down to 250 and in end of December I think it's down to 100. And that's going to cause a lot of poverty and a lot of hardship. So I'm really worried about what's going to happen in the Vinnie's world and for the poor into the new year. So I've got two cases here that typify our year so far. This lady is 40. She has two children. The father and husband has deserted them and run off with someone else. So they're on their own. And we've never seen it before. She never thought she'd come to Vinnie's and she does not want to come to Vinnie's at all. This is really hard for her to do, but sheer desperation has forced her to come forward and ask for help. Because with the job seeker payment, she was originally getting 1,120 a fortnight and the rent is 900 a fortnight. So she's going to live and raise two kids on $220 a fortnight. And now that JobSeek has gone down by $300, you can see the problem. It's mission impossible. So we saw her originally about seven months ago, and we've been helping her ever since. Would you not do the same? You couldn't leave her there. It's just not give her some food and move along. We've paid for school uniforms. We've helped her with all sorts of bills and payments. We've helped her with food and toiletries and Woolworths cards, and we're gonna keep helping her until we either run out of money or literally she gets back to work and the vaccine is out to crush this virus. Now on the other extreme, normal business. Uh, sadly, domestic violence is a core part of what we do. That's the sort of people we often have to help. So this lady is 40, same age, same sort of person, very large family. And they've come here to ride, and we get a call from Catholic Care that says, look, this family's coming, can you please meet them, they need your help. Simple as that. And we go to see them, and they're standing there in their clothes with a couple of little suitcases on the ground, and that's all they've got. I've always got nicknames for things, I call them undercover cases. They have left where they were, it's their only chance to get away from him, and the sheer violence and terror that they're subjected to every day of their life. So they have left every single thing behind and they are not going back to get it because the chances of him following them are great and then finding out where they are. So what would you do if you were standing there? You'd do the same as we did. You'd kit them out. We bought him a second hand washing machine and a fridge. We went to see our mate Luke, the manager at Big W at Top Ride and with a good discount we bought a microwave, a vacuum cleaner, a kettle and a toaster. We went to Vinnie's ourselves and we got them a lot of clothing and heaps of furniture and a vast amount of, you know, linen and sheets and towels and pots and pans and all these things. And, uh, and a parishioner gave us a television. So we kitted them out fairly well and so far they seem to be doing okay. But sadly, there's the two extremes, two women 40 years of age, coronavirus devastation or just life devastation. So that's going to continue and we expect it to get a lot busier. Now last year at Christmas you gave us $40,000. It was an enormous amount and it was great. And then a large number of you give us credit card donations really regularly and that keeps us going during the year and others just come forward and give us money from time to time. You're very good. We wouldn't do any of this stuff. We couldn't do it. We couldn't help those women without your help. So now we're at Christmas and I handed out to each of you an appeal envelope because we're not allowed to put them in the seats. So sorry if you didn't want one. 
But with Innies, everything you give us, we're going to give away. We are not paid, we are not employed, we are volunteers, and we get nothing for doing it. No reimbursements, nothing. So we give away 100 cents in the dollar. It is 100% tax deductible. So please work out what donation you want to do, and if you're not ready today, take them home. Bring them back next week, or bring them back during the week, because we have wardens on the, on the door entry, because we have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament here, Tuesday through to Sunday. So work out what you want to do and bring them back. Apart from the money, my biggest concern is the tree of joy. You know it's in the corner there. I'm really concerned about having enough presents, because obviously we can't all get to Mass. 350 people is not the thousand that normally come here. I need more presents this year. Last year you gave us 300 presents. This year I need a minimum of 400, if not 500. So if you can take some tags off the tree, we need more presents for men and women. For every child we have, we have two men or two women. And these people are often very lonely, very isolated, and often deserted, especially the mentally ill. They've burnt their bridges by their behaviour and they're on their own. So think about the adults. For men, a really good gift is a gift card. You know, Lowe's, Maya, that type of thing. For women, it's a, there's a bigger range of things you can do. For families, movie cards are wonderful because believe me, the only movie they're going to see is the one that you sponsor them for. So a movie card or movie tickets. So don't hesitate to do so. If the tags were all gone, don't hesitate to just make up your own plan. Pretty easy, men, women, child. So if the tags are gone, just keep going because we will really need them. For those of you at home who are not at Mass today but are watching this on television or laptop or whatever, come in and pick up a Vinnie's envelope from us at the door there at the sign-in. If you do it on the web, we'll never get the money. If you come in and get an envelope and drop it back, we will. It'll come here. If you want to do toys and presents, you don't even have to come and collect a tag. Just do them and bring them in and leave them with the wardens there or at the tree and we'll collect them daily. So just because you're not here doesn't mean you can't be part of it. And if you come in during the week, you're pretty safe from the virus. The numbers are much lower. So have a think about that, please. Remember with the presents, no gift wrapping. Don't waste your money. We're going to take all the paper off and look at what you give. We have to inspect it. So at the end of the day, every year we talk about this and every year you help us because you know the one thing that we all know. Jesus loves the poor. Father's sermon this morning and the scripture was about that very fact. Whatever you do for someone else, you did for me. So let's just keep doing it. So I thank you for your support. I wish you a happy, holy and safe Christmas and a wonderful 2021. God bless. stand. The sobering realities, the realities that are const constantly our St. Vincent de Paul people are looking at, we thank you for your help for them. Let's profess our faith in the tender, compassionate love of the Good Shepherd for each of us. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, the Father of, of, heaven, and of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so, my dear friends, honouring today Jesus as universal King and his call to look after the least of our brethren, let us go out to meet him in the poor and serve him in the neediest of our time. We pray for Pope Francis and all the leaders of our church. May the Holy Spirit inspire them to be shepherds like Jesus and look after and tend to God's people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church that we may recognise Christ in one another and honour the dignity of each person whom God has called to life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those in our society who care for the sick, the hungry, the prisoners and the homeless. May they be graced to continue their work and to encourage 
more people to come to the aid of those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. As we come to the end of the liturgical year, we pray with gratitude for all the faithful who have striven to preserve the spirits of our communities during this unprecedented pandemic. May our churches continue to be places of communal prayer as we celebrate the Eucharist together. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month of November, we remember and pray for all the faithful departed, especially our family, friends and parishioners. We also pray for those who have died recently and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they receive the grace of redemption in Christ's heavenly home. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Since the beginning of uh, the corona coronavirus uh, crisis, when we were locked down, uh, there was also lockdowns overseas. Our parish extended its borders, and there's a family called the Steindlers from Kansas who have been following our masses because the 10 o'clock mass is 7 p.m. in Saturday there, and that was their normal mass. Well, I just learned just at the beginning of this mass that uh, uh, the whole family has caught the coronavirus, and sadly their grandmother has died of it this morning, and so we particularly offer our mass this morning. It's a virtual parish that we have as well, and we offer the mass for Dorothy Steindler. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you reveal the mystery of your kingdom through Christ our King. Hear our prayers and help us to proclaim your name confidently as we wait to enter the kingdom you have prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by my soul. the sea is, eh? Okay, so what do we do today? Any ideas? What do we do today? In death's dark veil, uh -huh. what did you hear about? yet will I fear none Anybody help? What were you talking about this For thou art with yeah. me and ah, Jesus, thy rod okay, so and star and he's a beautiful shepherd comfort so that's what still. Saying, right? so if you'd like to place your little things here up in the altar now, that'd be beautiful. Perfect. Amazing. Furnished in presence of my foes, my head thou dost with oil anoint, and my cup overflows. away all of my iniquities, Lord, and cleanse me of all my sins. Thank you. Great. Cool. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, 
we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. We have a special preface today for this Feast of Christ the King. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, Jesus, as, the, as, as our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, kingdom of truth and life, kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Save us, Saviour Savior of the world, for, for by, by your cross and resurrection you have set, set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember especially your servant, Dorothy Steindler, who has been called today from this world to yourself because of the coronavirus and your will, O Lord. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for Emmanuel and Domenica and for Michael as well. And for all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. We pray as well for all our dead in this month of November. Have mercy in us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Mother of us all, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Jesus' peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sin of the world, world have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as though you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. to the feast of heaven and earth come to the table of plenty god will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty oh come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends i wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love come to the feast of heaven and earth come to the table of plenty god will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty oh come and eat without money come to drink without price my feast of gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. My bread will ever sustain you through days of sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like a sea of gladness, flood the depths of your soul. Come to the feast 
Just a few other things. We've already mentioned the, the Vinnie's Christmas Appeal, so we'll leave that there for now. We are um, organising our Christmas Masses, and as you would know, we have to be also, um, we have to respond to what the government permits us to have. Uh, so far, it seems as if we'll be able to have the outdoor Mass over at, uh, over at um, Holy Cross Ride at 6pm, but what we've decided to do this year is to bring forward the Kids' Liturgy Mass. So we're going to have a Mass just for the kids and for their parents. That will be at 4.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve in the school, okay? So we'll still get more details about that, but we're going to have, instead of just having the 6 p.m. Mass, which was kids and everybody, we're going to bring the kids' liturgy forward to 4.30 p.m. here in the school of St. Charles, and we're going to still have the 6 p.m. Mass over on the lawns, but it seems we're limited to about 500 people. And because we normally get between 1,500 to 2,000 people at that Mass, you can imagine uh, that we're going to be having a little bit of difficulty, perhaps. But apart from that, we've put on an extra Mass at 7 p.m. here in this church as well. Okay? Extra Mass at 7 p.m. in this church, then the 9 p.m. Mass in this church, the 8 p.m. Mass is down at Lady Queen of Peace, the 10 p.m. Mass is for the French. The Midnight Mass is here. We've got so many Masses coming out of our ears this Christmas, okay? Midnight Mass in here. And then we have the 8 a.m. here, the 9 a.m. over at Our Lady Queen of Peace, the 10 a.m. here, and the 10.45 Mass in Italian. If that doesn't sound exhausting to you, don't worry. It's all in a day's work for us priests, huh? So, we have to see how the, re the restrictions will be. We're hoping that we can have people outside here as well. So we'll give you the information as soon as it comes in. For now, we haven't been given the advice. Just a general sort of an idea. There's 500 outside. We could do a number of masses over at Holy Cross, but that becomes complicated. So that's the, that's the idea up until now. We need a lot of volunteers this Christmas. 
Don't hold back, okay? <laughs> we even had somebody from Toon Gabby say they wanted to be a volunteer. Thanks, hey, I really appreciate that, okay? Our masses are, are giving all sorts of benefits. Hmm? So please keep in mind, even if you come for one mass, come for a second and be a volunteer. We need people for parking, people for ushering, people for everything. So please keep that in mind for this Christmas, at all those masses, if you come to one, think of coming to a second time. You get an extra 50 points up in heaven anyway on my frequent flyer account, okay? But be there, okay? So apart from that, we are welcoming next weekend at the 6 p.m. mass, we're going to be welcoming Helen, Natsley, Miriam, Winnie, and Martin as catechumens and Nicole as a candidate for our new RCI program this year. That's at the 6 p.m. Mass on Saturday night. That's really wonderful. And please remember, yes, the door shuts when we get to 100 people. There were a number of people we had to turn away today. Um, we do have the difficulty that we can't allow any more in than the 100 people inside the church. So please get in your booking beforehand, but it's great to have the kids, okay? So kids, mass, rocks, okay? Wonderful to have you. Let's continue on with our final blessing. And thanks very much, John, for talking to us about Savinus Paul. He'll be outside as well for everybody who wishes to ask any questions to him or find out how they can donate. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hail, Redeemer, Redeemer King, King divine, priest and Lamb, the Lord of time. King whose reign shall never cease, Prince of everlasting peace. Angels, saints, and nations sing, praise be Jesus Christ our King. Lord of life, earth, sky, and sea, King of love on Calvary. Thrills, rules our minds, our hearts, our wills, till in peace each nation rings with your praises, King of kings. Angels, saints, and nations sing, praised be Jesus Christ our King, Lord of life, of sky and sea. King of love on the 